and welcome back to the seventh installment of the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror review series here. Uh, so this one includes uh, The Thing and I, the, uh, the Genesis Tub, and Citizen King. So these were all very good episodes, and I can see why a lot of people put this on par with the one before it, because they really are, like, in the Simpsons' peak years and everything of writing, these are really good. So, the thing and I, basically, the gist was, evidently at birth, Bart had a Siamese twin that he was never told about, and the two were separated at birth, and the twin, Dr. Hibbert decided was evil, and has been kept chained up in the attic its whole life. His name's Hugo, <laughs> and he's been up there subsisting on nothing but a bucket of fish heads once a week. So, you know, as you do, totally normal shit for separating the Siamese twins. But, um, one tiny detail that I thought was really fun with this one that proves little details carry over in The Simpsons for continuity. When they first go up to the attic and they're looking around and there's like just normal attic stuff in there, one of Marge's paintings of Ringo Starr is still visible up there, which is a throwback to the episode with him. What was the episode? A Brush With Fame, I want to say it was. Um, so that was a nice throwback that definitely caught my attention a mile of freaking way. And it's also interesting on a second level to me because of a line that is later in the episode. Ringo, like the real one, has gone on record before saying that this one quote is his favorite from The Simpsons period. And it just happens to be from this episode too. Uh, the one where... Homer's saying to the aliens, Don't eat me! I have a wife and kids! Eat them! It's from the same episode, so... Kind of interesting that there's the throwback to his episode in the same one that has his favorite line in it. I know this totally is not in any way, shape, or form important to... Storyline. Sorry. I get sidetracked. So, anyways. So, they've... Um, Homer and Marge have kept Hugo a secret from Bart and... You know, the other kids, their entire lives. They had no idea this was a thing. Um, until Marge was, like, very cryptically alluding to the thing that Homer has to go do. And he fills a bucket with fish heads, and he's singing the fish heads song to himself, which I was like, ah, oh my god, somebody else on the planet knows that song, as he goes up to feed Hugo. And Bart's like, what the hell? What's up there? And of course, it's freaking him and Lisa out, like, trying to figure out what is in the attic that they're not telling us about. So while Marge and Homer are out one day, the kids climb up there to see what the hell is in the attic. And of course, they find Hugo up there. And it only takes, like, a matter of minutes before they have accidentally freed him. Which, apparently, there was a whole contingency plan from Marge in the event that this ever happened that is, like, immediately enacted. It's like, oh, so you knew that was gonna be a thing. That's cool and totally not in any way, shape, or form unsettling. But anyway, um, eventually they get a hold of him and, well, actually... While they're out looking for him, it turns out Hugo never left the house, but Bart was the only one that stayed behind, so Hugo whisks Bart up to the attic, and now he's trying to make the tables turn and everything. He's got him tied down and everything. He's like, yeah, everything was great until they separated us, so let's sew us back together. I've been practicing and shows a rat with a bird attached to its back. Yeah, uh, but Dr. Hibbert comes in at the last minute and saves the day, although he points out that, wait a minute, his scar's on the wrong side. That means the evil twin was Bart all along, which, I mean, 
on one hand, plot twist, on the other hand, we've, we've watched the show for how many seasons and we're shocked that Bart's the evil one? Like, what the hell? I even thought it, like, the start of the episode, really, the, the twin is more evil than Bart? And it was like, ah, I was right, I pegged that one, but, um, yeah, so the episode concludes with now Bart's the one that lives in the attic and Hugo gets to live with the family, albeit awkwardly. So, that's that one. So, the Genesis Tub, I think, is probably my favorite portion of this episode. Kind of like the last one, the middle portion was my fave on that one, too. But the Genesis Tub starts out with Lisa's trying to put together a science fair project for school, and initially she's got this project where she thinks she's going to test, does Coca-Cola really dissolve a tooth? So she has a tooth in a Petri dish that she poured some Coca-Cola into and leaves it overnight um, and goes to bed. She gets up in the morning and puts it under a microscope and she's like, oh, mold, that's like science fair gold. And she zooms in on it some more and she finds out it's not mold. It is actually a teeny tiny civilization of itty bitty humans. And they're just, like, cruising on about their lives. She's like, oh my god, I've created life. And over the upcoming days, they evolve, like, through different eras. Like, what took man, like, hundreds of thousands of years to do, they are doing in a matter of days until they're, like, in this futuristic um, society that Lisa is all sorts of impressed by. Until frick. And Bart comes by and he just thinks it's a little teeny tiny diorama and he comes in and squish, 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 squish and basically destroys their civilization. But they survived and they want revenge. And now they view Bart as the devil, but they still view Lisa as like their god because they don't know any better. Um, and eventually they... They build this machine so they can size Lisa down to their size and worship her as their ruler. And the tooth is her throne. And yeah, they can't like get over the fact that Bart, the evil one, is her brother when she is so good. And they start asking all these existential questions like one would probably ask to God in real life. But um, it all becomes a bit much for her. I honestly don't remember if they do end up sizing her back up at the up end of the episode or not. I want to say they don't, but I could be wrong about that. I'd have to rewatch it again. But regardless, it does get interesting. <laughs> uh, and then the last portion is Citizen Kang, where it's pretty dated now because of the political context of it. Um... I mean, Bill Clinton was still the president, if that tells us anything. And it was, like, election time back then between he and Bob Dole. Yeah, it's from that many years ago. <laughs> so, um, the aliens have come back once again. And they have abducted Homer this time. And they're asking him to direct them to his leader, He's like, well, I suppose that'd be in Washington, D.C., and that'd be Bill Clinton. But there's an election in a couple of weeks, so it might not be Bill Clinton. They're like, what do you mean, election? It's like, well, I mean, it might be Bob Dole. And, huh, set the parameters to Bob Dole. Basically, long story short, they end up abducting both Bob Dole and Bill Clinton, and they, like, keep them in, like, uh, cryogenic tanks, I suppose. And they're sus uh, suspended in the animation in there while um, the aliens basically steal their brains, essentially. Um, and they're able to shapeshift into looking like them. Although when they talk, it's like really obvious that something's very off here. This is not the normal Bill Clinton or Bob Dole. They sound very robotic. <laughs> um, but they're trying to hold this election anyway through their fake selves, and they've doused Homer with rum so that nobody will believe him if he tries to squeal about what's going on, but he keeps trying to blow the whistle on him anyway, and as expected, no one believes him, they just think he's drunk again, but um, 
eventually he's able to find the spaceship and everything, so he has something to go from. Uh, he, I believe, gets back into it and frees the real Bill Clinton and Bob Dole, or tries to- something happens with them. Again, I'd have to rewatch it a second time. Oh, my goldfish brain and sleep deprivation, oh yay. But, um, yeah, I think actually he accidentally sends the real ones out into space, and it was all bad. But what he does do, he's able to, um, demask the aliens so that society can realize, yeah, that wasn't really them. They're like, well, it's still a two-party system, so you have to vote for somebody. Yeah. It's a whole political commentary, which, I mean, on one hand, kind of cute. On the other hand, it's like, oh, it's so dated, though. Which, I mean, on the other hand, I'm sure as we go through more of these episodes, there's probably more of these political references that are super, super dated now that at the time were topical. But, anyway. Uh, in this particular one, that was probably my least favorite of the three segments this time, but that's just me. So, how would I rate this one? Uh, it's fairly solid. I think I would give this one a 4 out of 5. I do highly recommend this one because it is really good like the one before it. So, anyways, that is it for me for this one. So, as usual, you know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe. Hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload. Leave comments down below. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Facebook fan page, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Etsy, everything and more. It's all down below. If you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. Get your name on the end card for a month from the time of donating. Anyway, guys, till next time. Bye-bye.